वन Hey, what's up? Ken from Palm Beach Dino here. I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys about a new product that I'm testing out for Injector Dynamics. It's their brushless fuel pump controller. Um, it's a brand new device. They've been working on it for quite a few years. Uh, what it does is it drives a brushless fuel pump um, at variable speeds to meet your needs on a car even up to this level. It can support uh, with the pump that's used, uh, which is a TI Automotive Walbro pump. Uh, that normally will only flow 500 liters per hour with the ID brushless controller you can get up to 1150 liters per hour um, out of one pump um, so I wanted to show you guys how it's set up and go over it just a little bit and display uh, how it works and varies the uh, pump RPM in my case based on manifold pressure you can also set it up uh, if you have a standalone with a PWM type control or you can run it in constant speed mode probably uh, the least likely way this would be used. But anyway, let's head back to the trunk and we'll go over uh, what's going on back there. Okay, we're back here in the trunk. Uh, this isn't exactly cleaned up how I would normally have my car. This is more prototype stuff uh, for testing. So you can see right here is the Injector Dynamics brushless fuel pump controller. Here's a better picture of it. Um, now, what this does is it controls the power and the speed, to, the power to the pump, which obviously controls the speed of the pump. Uh, right here what we have is a radium uh, surge tank fuel cell setup. Uh, this houses the brushless pump and it also houses a secondary pump that keeps the surge portion of this filled. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you a picture of that right now. Um, looking at this picture, the green bracket is where say a normal Walbro 465 pump will go. Uh, that feeds into the uh, surge canister and inside that surge canister is the large pump. The idea is is the canister is always going to stay full with fuel so even as you run lower on fuel you don't have fuel sl slosh concerns or anything like that. Uh, longer term uh, I would assume that somebody's going to make a fuel hat for maybe working on it I'm not really sure to house this uh, larger brushless pump uh, but for now this is the best way to test it. So what we're going to do now is is I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on on the car and I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Actually, Kobe, can you just turn the key on and start that other camera? Okay, so key on. That noise you hear right there is the brushless pump running. Um, the way this works is it has a map sensor that is up front uh, plumbed into manifold, uh, manifold uh, vacuum and boost, uh, but right now Instead, I have that line routed back here because I want to be able to show you what's going on with it. Let's start that one. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I've got a camera on the boost. I got a boost gauge uh, tied into that, and I'll put this over the screen and show you how this is going to vary with boost. Then you pull the boost away, it's, in, it's instantaneous. So, on, off. Just let the boost bleed back down, it follows it perfectly. So as you can see there, that's, uh, it's instantaneous, it's awesome. Now I've used this, go ahead and turn the key off. I went ahead and used this setup for my seven second pass and it's been on the car pretty much ever since uh, the new turbos and everything up front. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go over that log now because of this setup, it was able to save my engine most likely on the seven second pass. Here's why. With this setup, it's going to always maintain pump RPM. Whereas normally on a normal setup, the fuel pump is running off system voltage, and if you lose voltage, you're going to lose uh, fuel pump output. Um, not in this case. Uh, that's what the controller does. That's the magic of the controller. So what we're going to do is look at my dyno, uh, or my seven second pass, and what happened was I lost my alternator and my voltage dropped as low as 11.3 uh, volts all the way down the track, which is a nightmare situation for a car like this that has such an electrical load. But, and, and it did cause me some other issues unrelated to the fuel system. 
but let's look at the log and I'll show you how it maintained pressure even at the low voltage. Okay, I've got the data log up from the seven second pass. Uh, I wanna go over with you guys uh, what kind of data I can log with this and the new fuel pump controller and also show you how it probably saved my engine and uh, also allowed me to run a very fast pass even though I had a, a parts issue with the vehicle. So let's go over the vehicle uh, parts issue first, which was my alternator. Right here, you'll see the white line is RPM. So this is launch, oh, excuse me, um, spool, first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. So as you can see, the alternator was fine uh, uh, on, the t on the trans brake, 14.8 volts. And then as soon as I got towards the top of first gear, it dropped out and never recovered as low as 11.3 which is very bad on a on any vehicle having low voltage but my car has a huge load on it and uh it could have been catastrophic but it wasn't i did have issues but not related to the fuel pump controller so let's go over that so um one thing i can log on the fuel pump is fuel pump rpm as you saw in the video as you increase boost the rpm of the pump goes up and so does the flow so here we're at 10,000 RPM at idle. And then as I spool the car up, RPM goes up. So here on the um, trans brake, it's a 21,000 and it's a 27,000 going down the track. This is probably a little overly aggressive and you can fine tune this. This is the way I have it set up is once it hits 14 PSI, it's at a full 1150 liters per hour. That is probably too aggressive, but I wanted to make sure uh, I didn't drop fuel pressure. So I can fine tune that and we have enough data here to fine tune that. So let's look at the next thing. The next thing is fuel pressure at the rail. <clears throat> this is how most people log fuel pressure, although I'm gonna show you a little bit better way to uh, evaluate it. Anyway, right here at idle, we're at 53. I run 55 base pressure. So as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of uh, vacuum on this car um, as it gets up onto the two-step it's at 65 psi and then going down the track it's at 80 88 89 psi now to really know if that's correct you have to know your boost which i do have here you can look at um, right there we're at 30 pounds of boost 88 you can do the math or you can just set up a custom channel called differential fuel pressure, delta P, whatever, pressure drop across the injector. What that basically means is that's your rail pressure, uh, plus or minus uh, manifolds pressure. So what you're looking for in this case is a flat line that matches your base pressure, which I don't exactly have, and I'll explain why. Here, we're at 55 PSI, which is what my differential pressure, or my base pressure is set at. Now, it goes up a little bit once I get into boost, 58, maybe as high as 59 going down the track, it's 57 to 58. Now, why did it go up a few PSI? Because I'm being a little overly aggressive with the RPM of the pump probably, and it's overrunning the regulator a little bit, I would guess, but we're only talking a few PSI. So if I really wanted to, uh, I can just adjust the fuel pump controller a little bit, maybe allow it to go up to maybe 20 PSI before it goes full, and that's gonna change the response curve of the pump and all that. But it's only a few PSI and I'm not really concerned about it yet. The car is far from dialed in, this being one of those things. Now, uh, what this shows is even though uh, voltage dropped to 11.3 in this spot right here, we're still maintaining fuel pressure and pump RPM. And in, in this case, I'm running, the car is probably in the 1450 to 1500 horsepower range at the wheels. It went 182 miles an hour at 3440 weight, but the tune's not 100. Well, as you can, I'm going to show you next the issues that we had. The car was very lean. Also, shift points aren't uh, perfect, all those sorts of things. It's probably on this boost setting more like a 185 to 186 car when it's dialed in. So anywhere between 14 and 1500 horsepower at 11.3 volts, and it's the pump kept up no problem. What didn't keep up was the stock computer itself. And what happened was the low voltage messed with the mass air reading, which there's no easy way to interpret that here because I would have to do a compare with when the mass air is reading correctly. But one way you can know 
is by looking at your air load. Air load is calculated based off of the mass air reading, which is measuring the mass of air, and calculating engine load uh, based off engine displacement. So with 30 pounds of boost, 3.2 it sounds reasonable. And then as voltage dropped, as you can see, as voltage dropped, so did air load because the mass air meter was not reading correctly, uh, which in turn made the car very lean. Um, if you look here, well, right at this spot, lambda is 7.7, 7, which is what I was looking for. And then as soon as voltage dropped, boom, it, it got super lean, 0.95. And then throughout the run, the fuel trims added fuel back in to the point of 0.83 lambda, which is still lean uh, from where I usually run it. And at that point, it's adding in 27 PSI or 27 percent of fuel to get to 0.83 lambda, which is not enough. So what this shows us is a combination of the ID fuel pump controller, which is going to maintain pressure regardless of system voltage, and the fact that the Coyotes have wide bands. Um, this saved me on a situation where I had a failure. Now, there's some things I can do in the tune, probably, to make this closer to correct as things fail. Uh, and based on this, and possibly, you know, I could have lost the engine on this pass. Uh, maybe I'll look into making those changes. But the most important part for this video is that the ID controller makes your fuel delivery way more reliable and consistent. It has outputs that allow you to log. I'm logging pump RPM, which is really the most important one. There are some CAN diagnostics outputs that I don't believe I can look at very easily, but if you have a standalone like a MoTeC or anything that supports CAN, Caltech, a lot of it, most do nowadays, uh, you can feed that into the standalone for any kind of diagnostics. Um, the pump is controllable via this way, via a map sensor, but it also has PWM control. Again, in a standalone situation, you may find that more useful. And you can run it in constant speed mode. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, continue to test this pump, turn it up. I have 72 millimeter turbos on the car. There's lots of boost left, and we're going to see how far it will go. ID is estimating it at about 2,000 horsepower at the crank capable out of the one pump. Um, right now, as far as I know, I'm the only one that's tested it outside of ID Stewart uh, with the Honda, uh, which you can watch his video from World Cup was awesome. He went like 8.2, I believe, a World Cup and maybe 8.1 later when he went home with this pump in his car, which on a single uh, Zona Rotor Turbo is making over 1,000, probably 1,100 horsepower. Uh, those are the two test cars I know about. I'm sure there's other tests going on that I don't know about yet. But anyway, that's where we're at. We're going to keep pushing it. Uh, price and time frame, I'm not sure about. Um, stay tuned to our channel for information on when this is going to be released and packages to get it all to work properly in your car. So we'll see you next time.